This is Twit. Vic's reporting guided me through, and Jason's as well, but guided me through, especially the IoT portions of this event, in large part because her reporting is authentic and it's honest. And YouTube was loaded with those ridiculous influencers. Some are fantastic. Some are just reading the press release. In fact, the vast majority uh, of YouTubers I saw were just reading off a press release. It was very difficult to tell the to have insights into the event and the products and to say you know what jason said a few moments ago the context to put this into context who are these products for what story is being told and is this something that is um uh, amazing or is this like victoria in your reporting is this within the context of iot or health or something that is maybe very good for you but but not like jaw dropping awe dropping as somebody um, in our chat room said, it was gnaw dropping. Gnaw dropping. <laughs> yeah. Nah. I mean, I mean hypertension, uh, as far as the watches go, the hypertension feature is an interesting one. It they uh, got just got yesterday FDA just got, approval for that. So yeah, they just got FDA clearance for that. Yeah. Um, which you that's know, good. The watches I, will ship with it. So, but by know, the way, yeah. you don't have to buy a new watch, right? Or do you? No, you don't have to. Um, it'll come back to the Series Nine and ultra two or later uh because it does rely on the updated optical sensor and it's an interesting feature because it's basically negating the need to have uh one of those inflatable cuffs in order to calibrate which is generally how these smartwatch or wearable versions of these blood pressure features go and it was like particularly interesting to me because whoop which is another wearable that screenless wearable they really pride themselves in in-depth health metrics they also introduced a blood pressure insights feature recently and they got slapped on the wrist by the fda because they were like, oh, you didn't actually get clearance for this feature and you need to get clearance for this feature because what you're doing is diagnostic adjacent. Yeah. And so, they went back and forth on it. Whoop is claiming that it's wellness, that the W word I say, because wellness does not require regulatory um, oversight. Whereas something that's diagnostic right. adjacent, medical adjacent will. Apple's uh, very but, good at skirting that. They know exactly what to say to be not a medical device because that requires a higher standard it's actually we one of our hosts steve gibson is uh, in his youth wrote software for an for a sphygma mammometer those things that's this cuffs that squeeze you he says very difficult to actually measure uh blood pre intermittent blood pressure because you have to measure in between the beats is it's very complicated it's not something a watch could ever do you have to have a compression cuff to do that accurately so what apple's really doing is is looking at signals over a period of a month right it's a long period yeah. of time it's 30 days I, it's 30 days you need 14 days of data from that uh 30 days i believe that it only takes daytime readings as well so it's not reading overnight and it's not going to give you direct readings or any estimate. you're never going to get your blood pressure from it you're never going to get your That's blood right. pressure from it um what it's doing is it's basically uh comparing your signals and the data that it's getting from you to a uh, baseline derived from like a very large data set. I think it's machine learning, it right? Yeah, it says machine yeah. learning. Yeah, we I, take these I people believe. with hypertension <laughs> and we see what we get from them and we compare it to yours and hmm. But even yeah, then it's not diagnostic. It's it's, it's a diagnostic. warning. It's like maybe you should check your blood pressure. That kind of it's, thing. It's 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 what we call a detection feature and it's yeah. sort of like a it's like a flag. It's going like, "Hey, uh, something's a little bit off here, so maybe go talk to your medical provider. And right. in the world of wearable and health tech, that's kind of the limitations that it's consumer the best you can devices. Do. That's the best you can do because none of these companies want the liability of diagnosing you with something and being wrong. Right. So that's why or so mi many more importantly, missing something. Or missing right. something. Like they don't want to be in trouble for uh, Killing basically you. giving you a. <laughs> <laughs> like it, basically they don't want to give you a false negative right and then you get blamed for that so most of them when they're designing their features will gear towards um not delivering false positives this is probably as good as you're ever going to get from a watch i know you're an aura ring fan uh they don't attempt to do this um yeah maybe uh airpods could get a better look because they're because of the positioning in your ear but you're never going to get a blood pressure reading from this However, well, there, hypertension there is a silent killer. They give you a blood pressure reading? 
Yeah, there was one by Omron that I tested a couple of years ago. Yeah. And what it does is yep. that um, I use their Sphygma mammometer, but that's the cuff. So they make a watch, huh? They made they made a watch. Uh, it did get FDA clearance. Uh, the difference was that there was an inflatable. Oh, there's a cuff. Band. Oh, okay. yeah. So there's an inflatable wristband in there and it squeezes you. Okay. So, you know, that's how they <laughs> so they do use a cuff. That's how they do it. Uh, the 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 holy grail with all of these wearable technologies is non-invasive. Yeah. So, you know, non-invasive blood pressure estimates or non-invasive um, blood glucose monitoring, which I don't care what Bloomberg says, that's not coming anytime soon. I agree. I've talked to the diabetes. It's not going to happen. You have it's to not test coming the blood anytime soon. Yeah. They've been working on non-invasive blood glucose monitoring technology since 1975. We're like 50 years since 1975. Not to sell Apple short, though, because, I mean, they showed that video of all the people who are, you know, underwater in his car and the Apple Watch saved his life and all that stuff. The Apple Watch has very clear health benefits, but... For sure. It's not a diagnostic tool. Uh, the AFib may be a little more accurate, perhaps, than the blood pressure, but it's still not diagnostic. It's, it's not diagnostic. It's de the, what they call it as detection. So yeah. they're never going to tell you what it is. It's like right. back when um, the pandemic was in full swing in 2020, you had a bunch of these wearable companies and researchers partnering together to try and see if they could detect infectious illnesses. Um, here we are five years later, and the main there's some version of that feature in the aura ring called symptom radar but it's very uh how do you say generic and they won't even say that it's illness they'll say there is an early sign that your health is changing what yeah i got one the other know. day i got one the other day my, my uh, temperature body temperature up a, up a degree over the average and that actually that's why i started wearing the core or us during covid hoping that it would catch it early it never did <laughs> so yeah. in, in and then i wasn't world, sick my body was hot i guess i don't know in the developing world for for several years like five years now they've been taking they've been doing something similar to going back to hypertension and blood pressure where you take your your finger and you put it on your camera and yeah. it can do enough right to give right. you some indication of like samsung's oh, do you that. should go yeah and and do yeah. it yeah exactly a lot of it's on samsung phones yeah. even even like $200 phones with not like the best cameras, um, with cameras from like 2019, you know, can can do that. And it's as good as, as what, you know, is is in uh, Apple, but the difference wh where we're at now, and Aura is a good example of this, is that how can you take that health data and use it to give you some actionable insights, right? To tell yeah. you to do something. This is where Apple still has a lot of work to do because Apple will give you, Apple Health will give you a ton of different individual insights on each, you know, on each of these different things, but doesn't necessarily take them together, you know, look at algorithms over and machine learning over time, you know, Aura and, and some of the other uh, smart rings as well, Ultra Human um, and, and some of the others, they are, they are doing a better job of this, right? Of like taking these things and turn them into actionable insights of like, you might want to consider doing X. And so, um, I was hoping we'd see more of that in um, watch OS, you know, the new version of watch OS and or the new Apple watches. We didn't, although we did get a sleep score, you know, that 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 is a, a step in the right direction. But um, it's still uh, it's still a bit of a challenge. The software stuff and the, and the AI, you know, and machine learning parts. Um, you know, Apple's moving very kind of slowly and deliberately there. I think on purpose. I think I some of it is it. a talent thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. I appreciate it because I've tested a lot of the AI companions and insights in these fitness apps that have rolled out over the yeah. past year, and they're hot. They're bad. <laughs> they're yeah. not good. They're like I think the only one I'm moderately, cautiously optimistic about is Google's AI Health Coach, just because you know I had a chance to talk with the execs behind it um, after yeah. the Made by Pixel event, and they seemed very thoughtful about what the implementation was going to be. So I'm cautiously optimistic to test it because you know the fluff that comes beforehand is fluff. You yeah. won't really know until you get to try it, but. Um, the ones that I've seen from Aura, the ones that I've seen from Garmin and Strava, they're just Captain Obvious book report regurgitators where it's like, here's your, <laughs> here's your data. You ran fast. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Faster Good than yesterday. Good job. It's, it's, I'm just repeating the data that's in the chart. Wow. Thank you. Um, amazing. Yay. <laughs> Yay so me. I kind of, um, 
I, I, I actually kind of appreciate that Apple is not over promising in this respect, yeah. but to your point, they are behind. So it can often feel like they are either moving glacially slow or just like not being innovating cautious. in the space, being maybe perhaps overly cautious. And even in the design of the sleep score, like if you actually look into it, it's kind of designed in an interesting way in that it's not based on your biometrics at all. Like a lot of what Aura does, well, like they'll take into consideration your heart rate variation, they'll take into consideration your sleep stages and whatnot. The, that particular score from Apple is built around um, kind of factors that you can control, like how long did you sleep? You can kind of control that. When did yeah. you go to bed? You can kind of control that. Yeah. I always look at, I don't know if it's meaningful, I always look at my uh, REM and deep sleep numbers. Uh, is that meaningful? Yeah. Um, I mean, is it accurate? I guess. Is it well, accurate? Is it, yeah. Accuracy is the big question. So, you know, Aura is very dedicated to communicating their science. I believe they're around 80% uh, in terms of accuracy correlation with the gold standard sleep polysomnography, but it's still only 80%. So um, wearables are a lot better at telling when you fall asleep and when you wake up. Right. The sleep stages, that's kind of. And it's yeah. also not within your control. That's not anything you can do. It's only something you can monitor and go like, wow. Yeah, they always try to correlate it to behaviors during the day. Like, were you stressed? Did you drink a lot of coffee? That kind of stuff. I don't find Blue it. Blue light late at night, you know, stuff. Yeah, like I, don't, I don't find it all that valuable. But I, it, is, it does gamify my sleep. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from a much longer show we call This Week in Tech. If you want to see the whole thing, there's a link down below. And you know what the best thing to do would be? like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching <laughs>